<laughs> Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I'm in a cheery mood. You know, a while back I made a video titled, Why You Shouldn't Install Valorant. It's a video that did really well, and quite honestly, it was a video that most people liked, and there were some people that disliked it. Now, I remember in this video, it wasn't really about the game itself, it was about the weird anti-cheat that Epic Game, or sorry, Riot had put into the entire situation. If you don't know, the anti-cheat is called Vanguard, which is loaded literally alongside your operating system. It will run until you choose to turn it off, which at that point you have to restart your computer to even enable. It was, a, it was an anti-cheat designed to prevent cheating on Valorant, which to its credit does a really good job. I've probably seen the least amount of hackers on Valorant, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, even with all of that said, ladies and gentlemen, do I accept a root level anti-cheat? Absolutely not. Now, in that video, there was a couple criticisms. Somebody was like, but Muda, your mouse needs some of that access too. You know, I can accept a mouse running on my system because I need it to actually utilize the system. I need my keyboard to run the system. So I get that, okay? Do I need to give a game the same access that I'm only gonna play for like 30 minutes? Absolutely not. Now, with all of that said, okay, my channel is about, when it comes to technical stuff like this, I like to have my cake and eat it too, okay? I like to experience the best of every world with almost no negatives, and I think today I found it. Now, for us Linux gamers, anti-cheat is sort of like the slap in the face. It's the one thing that prevents us. So, what did I used to do for Windows games with anti-cheats? Well, I used to spin up a virtual machine. Until games like Valorant started working against VMs. And some of their methods were very, very deep and intricate. It required for a while for me to patch kernels and do this kind of weird nonsense. And quite honestly, I stopped playing a lot of these games because it just simply wasn't worth the effort to sit through and do anything. Until this method was basically just discovered by plenty of people in the VFIO community. Now I'm going to I'm going to try to do my best to give credit where credit is due. Uh, since I have made this video, well, since I have done this topic myself, I found other people that have done it too. So I'm going to give credit where credit is due to almost everyone involved. Uh, you should give everyone the checkout because this is a pretty sweet system right here and some of them may do it better than me. Uh, for sure, you know, people are pe people come up with like some really ingenious methods for sure. So give everyone a check out if you can. Now to understand, okay, Valorant's anti-cheat system runs at ring zero, okay, meaning that if you try running the game or even installing it in a VM, it will not run. Now why do I do this in a VM? Okay, let me explain my fetish. I know some of you guys were like, ah, this guy and his fetishes for VMs. Listen, I like to containerize Windows. When I buy a thousand dollar computer, when I build a two thousand dollar computer. I don't like Microsoft or anyone owning it besides me. I like to really keep my stuff safe. Data is more worth than me, okay? That's just the reality of it. So to basically beat the anti-cheat and have it running normally as if it was a regular computer, but also have it contained like I want to see the best of both worlds, user privacy and the ability to play a fucking video game. Uh, this is the virtual machines that I use. Now, this whole thing assumes that you have VMs ready to go, okay? So here I have a Windows 10 virtual machine. Ignore the clone virtual machine. That's just designed for me to access Windows without passing a graphic card. Now, if I go to the settings over here, let me, let me tell you what I added. Now, this is an XML that details every aspect of a virtual machine. It is literally these four fucking lines, five lines that I have added in order to make this run absolutely flawlessly. Now, this is something called VP index state on, runtime status on, cynic state on, timer, S timer state on, reset state on, and then frequency state on. Ignore vendor ID state, that's just because Nvidia likes to fuck my asshole with wanting a $20,000 Tesla, so fuck that shit. These five plus one more line is literally all it took to beat the anti-cheat of Valorant, okay? So let me show you an example of how this works. Now that you've seen these lines, Let's fire up a Windows 10 virtual machine and get things started. Whoa, look at that camera cut here. We are now in the land of Windows 10. Now you may be wondering, oh wait, whoa, is this virtualized Windows 10? Well, it is. Now to get started with this, I'm gonna give you all some proof real quick. Now this virtualized system over here, of course, dead giveaway is, uh, I, I have a wrong amount of cores. Now I want you to open up a new tab between this video and the hentai one. And I want you to just immediately access, yeah, I knew what you were watching you sicko. I want you to Google how many cores does an i9-9900K have? The answer should be eight. 
What is a dead giveaway is Windows is reporting it as seven. See, if you if, if I was to get a hardware survey, uh, I'd be flagged as a red risk right now, let me tell you. But Vin Windows also believes virtualization is enabled. In fact, it's reading L1, L2, L3 cache is just fine. This is a good deal. Uh, what's also a dead giveaway is the speed is consistently at 3.6 gigahertz. Normally it should fluctuate to like four, maybe even five, but it's just using stock frequencies. Of course, you can't rely on all of this nonsense, but it reads my uh, RTX just fine. It reads everything just fine. Now, what's also a dead giveaway that I'm running a virtual machine is if I open up a window in SSH to my main uh, Linux system, you can see that this system is in i9-9900K, RTX 3090. Whoa, somehow it looks pretty similar. Uh, in fact, the memory reading is used up to 32 gigs, coincidentally the same amount that I've given to the VM. Shit! But this isn't just proof. In fact, I'll show you even more proof right now. If I open up a, if I open up a bash top, which will allow you to see every process on Linux, I know this looks pretty pretty nice to some people, but look at the thing. Windows 10, all right, it literally has loaded. This is the virtual machine software. It's loaded Windows 10, all threads, and it's using 15% of my CPU and half the memory. So that's probably the best amount of proof that I'm gonna give you. Now, alongside this, what you have to understand is what you need to do now, once you've booted into the system, right? And this is very important. You have to do turn Windows features on or off. And for some reason, the, okay, there it is. You have to go into this box and slash Hyper-V. You need to make sure both these boxes are enabled. Very important. Now, once it's done, you're gonna be asked to reboot the system. Do it. And if you're not stuck in a boot loop, which can happen if you're on a slightly older version of Linux, version 5.8 to like version 5.10 are, are, are versions that I know at least cause some problems. If you're on that new spanking 5.11, you're Gucci. Now with all of that done, you may be wondering, oh, what has changed? Well, we're now running two virtual machine hypervisors. So you may be like, whoa, how's that work? Now, to understand, we're doing something called nested virtualization, which allows you to run VMs within VMs. So let me explain to you how this is booting up. So when I fire up my main operating system, Linux, then I fire up this virtual machine, which fires up something called Hyper-V. And then Hyper-V loads up Windows 10. So believe it or not, Windows 10 is actually running under two virtual machine hypervisors, Linux and Windows's. If you don't know what Hyper-V is, Hyper-V is Microsoft's like actual virtualization platform. And I guess if the best comparison to be, is to be made, think of you, think of it like the Xbox One. When you fire up the Xbox One, you get that interface. All those games and apps that you see are literally just virtual machine containers. You click each and every one of them and they spin up a virtual machine. So let's say you wanted to play, uh, Call of Duty or something like say Final Fantasy 15. It would spin up a virtual machine with Final Fantasy 15 the game. And that's how things like Quick Resume work, right? On the Xbox Series X. It saves a memory state of the actual game to somewhere on the SSD. So when you fire up that game again, it'll just look at the memory state it has, plug it into the VM and say, bam, you're good to go. Uh, obviously a bit more complicated, but that's how Microsoft handles Xbox. It's also one of the reasons why Xbox isn't hacked yet because Microsoft's Hyper-V platform is some enterprise grade shit. So basically, we're piggybacking beating these anti-cheats by using Microsoft's own high-end VM platform. So understand, Windows 10 is now officially running underneath Microsoft's virtualization platform, okay? And with that, we actually, I believe, gain access to some pretty nifty things. Now, all up until this point, all these anti-cheats have been doing to detect VMs uh, has basically been looking into things like what kind of hardware we're using. Uh, sometimes they do things like VM exit in a way, uh, which is basically checking for calls that up until this point we've just been spoofing from what i believe microsoft probably already has the answers to hide their vm in a very perfect fashion which is why all of a sudden every single anti-cheat i'm about to show you has been fucked now i hope i didn't drag on too long the three subjects we're going to be using are known games to actually have root level anti-cheats the first one is being Valorant. The second one is Genshin Impact, which does the same thing. You can't VM this game. It's a root level anti-cheat. As denoted by it requiring administrator privileges, I would never allow a game to fucking have administrator privileges. That shit is insane. Then we have Ubisoft Connect, which is basically Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, as run by the anal pus that is Battle Eye, uh, I'm gonna show you 
how that is beaten, okay? Now, for disclaimer's sake, none of the footage you are about to see are games running on virtual machines. All right, disclaimer done? <laughs> we good. All right, so Valorant, as you can see over here, uh, which may or may not be running under a VM, <laughs> Uh, has me signed in and has given me the big play button. So I'm going to smash that big play button and we're going to jump right into the game. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we have actually officially gotten into Valorant. Now, we're connected to the game. We can actually invite our friends. We can go to play right now. And if I go to something like, say, uh, what is it, Deathmatch, uh, which would actually... It, listen, this is going to show you it works. If I hit start, Valorant is actually putting me into a queue right now to play the game. I shit you not, this is the game running underneath match the virtual found. machine that we have just fired up, which found a match and it has allowed us to connect. So these are all other players that we have connected to under a VM. Normally this could never have been possible because the anti-cheat is just so based. We have shown you that the anti-cheat is bypassable. Now with this, I want people to know I do not promote things match. like hacking. I think yeah. hacking is wrong. I think if you hack in a video game, you're kind of a bad person. So, as uh, you can watch this footage of me failing at Valorant, this is gameplay running underneath a full-on virtual machine. I have isolated its kernel anti-cheat, so what I've effectively done is it allowed the game to run, and its anti-cheat to run with no problems, and I get to protect all of my data and keep it all isolated. Now, in terms of user privacy and security, this is the bee's knees. Let's be real here. I mean, you can have your cake and eat it too. Now, I believe this actually ends up running because Hyper-V is a platform platform allows us to actually uh, uh, implement better memory protections and whatnot. At this point, Hyper-V and its security is basically allowing us to obfuscate this virtual machine that we have. Basically, Valorant's anti-cheat cannot look above Hyper-V. Unless, of course, somehow it's bypassed Hyper-V security, which would be a far cry. I mean, this is something that Microsoft would not tolerate if it went over there. And again, if these people were to throw Microsoft under the bus, that would also be bad news. So, I mean, Aside from my failure of the game, there's nothing hiding it from running underneath a virtual machine anymore. And this actually proves that you can run a lot of these anti-cheats within their containers so that you can, again, it's about having your cake and eating it too. And if we're talking about hacks, running it under this method actually makes running those same hacks that are sold for Valorant and numerous other games that much more difficult. Now, I want everyone to know, we did not bypass the anti-cheat. We're still actually playing this online. Valorant did not ease up on any of this nonsense to begin with. Okay, that's a quick little uh, little kill right there. I felt kind of bad for it. But to understand, Valorant didn't ease up on its anti-cheat whatsoever. In fact, it's still alive and well. And again, like I said earlier, this video is not designed to teach you how to hack. It's designed to teach you how you can keep your privacy on your computer intact and also play games. I really hate it when people in the computer space tell me you can't have your cake and eat it too, because there's obviously methods you can achieve to get all of it. If if you're willing to put in the effort. Now, Valorant may be an important game that actually has this anti-cheat sort of as a forefront, but there are plenty of other games that do offer this anti-cheat solution, and one of them is Genshin Impact, which requires administrator access and whatnot. With a virtual machine, this game will not start. With, again, adding those five or six lines, this game has actually started, and it actually works, and you can play it, as seen over here. It runs full max settings, which, for Genshin Impact, impact isn't too hard to run and again by no means are we actually bypassing the uh the the anti-cheats that have been set we're not breaking the rules we're not going around and actually bypassing and injecting hacks we're actually allowing this anti-cheat to work 100 percent in the scope that it was meant to and again it actually is preventing cheating so it's not like we're trying to prevent that from even happening this is simply just hyper v allowing us to run these games for some reason because of Hyper-V, and again, since it's closed source, I can't open it up and tell you exactly what it is. Hyper-V is absolutely doing its job at obfuscating its presence as a virtual machine. And these games are, are either they don't care, which could be very much the possibility, or 
they're simply uh, they simply can't look above it, and it's just an allowed platform because it does have plenty of security features that these games agree with. The last game on this list to look at, at least for me, was Rainbow Six Siege. Now, this game and BattleEye actually spanks Valorant in terms of VM detection, as far as I have actually seen. So, this was one of the games that was obviously very difficult to run. But again, with those six lines that we added, right? I'm gonna keep reiterating at six lines and installing Microsoft's Hyper. V platform, even Rainbow Six Siege. In fact, almost every Battle Eye game that I've tested, including Escape from Tarkov, has now been innocent and, and now appears to be allowed on Battle Eye. So it clearly, they clearly had an issue with KVM, but even though that Hyper V in effect is sort of the same thing, being another hypervisor, somehow it's either an allowed platform by Battle Eye or Battle Eye just cannot detect and actually go above Hyper V to see that something is there. So Microsoft, again, is basically acting like a shield for this kind of scenario. It's kind of ironic that Microsoft has provided the end all be all tool apparently to prevent anti cheat from basically preventing itself to run and uh, by definition banning individuals from rightly protecting their user security. I get that there's people that use VMs for cheating, it happens, but there are a lot more people out there that are using things that are far more easier to do like, you know, modified drivers or messing around with other, you know, user space settings to actually hack in these video games. Microsoft has given us sort of a shield and unless they patch it, which again, I don't think they can, or they badmouth Microsoft, which I don't think they absolutely can do that. That. that would just be a death knell. There's really no patch to be offered here in this scenario. And at the end of the day, I just want to say again, this isn't us allowing hacking. These methods that we've implemented, such as Hyper-V, for instance, actually prevent a lot of those hacks from even running in the first place. Hyper-V's memory protections are as good as you could ever expect, which is one of the core reasons I believe that these programs are either okay with it or they just can't go above and beyond and notice uh, if anything is shady. <sighs> All right, so this has been a longer than average video that I have made, but to understand, ladies and gentlemen, okay, uh, <laughs> we have beaten the anti-cheat scenarios that have been present. Now, by beating anti-cheat, I mean that we have allowed the anti-cheat to exist in its world without any form of tampering, without anything going on to try and confuse it. Now, to understand, I'm not teaching you how to cheat in video games. In fact, this method may actually make it harder for people to cheat in video games. Because with things like Hyper-V enabled into the operating system, I think modifying the actual memory, which is what people do in VMs to really hack in video games, may end up becoming much harder to do. Now, with that all said, the anti-cheats that we looked at are some of the most stringent anti-cheats that exist, Valorant especially, Genshin Impact, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, or Battle Eye in general, which includes Escape from Tarkov, are now actually working within a virtual machine, no problems at all. In fact, it's actually quite amazing to understand that this may all just be Hyper-V and it allowing us to pull this off in the first place. Now, to understand, people are wondering, I, I guess there is wondering, right, with the video that's going to come out and more attention being raised, will this get patched? And to be honest with you, it's one of those things where I've debated making a video on this at all because I really don't want to see this patched. But at the same time, since we're using Microsoft's platform, which I believe to really spoof and also allow tolerance from these anti-cheats, I don't think it's going to be patched. This would require people to actually work against Microsoft. Imagine if tomorrow any of these anti-cheats came out and said, yeah, fuck Hyper-V. You think Microsoft's going to tolerate that shit? Microsoft tolerates a lot, but if you shit on its corporate level platform like that, whoo, you better expect a slap in the dick like no one expected. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we, we, beat, we beat the Valorant anti-cheat, the world's scariest anti-cheat that couldn't run under VMs that required root level access. And now it does have root level access contained within its little box, of course. So yeah, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.